I just admire how you see Christ in everybody. Now, I know he's in everybody. Sometimes he's buried so deep, you need a backhoe to yes. get him out of somebody, you know. Uh, and sometimes people are, you know, they're so angry yes, or they they're so um, jealous or yes. ate up with it. And, and one thing that I love that you said is we're all in prison. We're yes. all in prison. Yes, what we are. What prison are you in? And you, you ask that. What prison? Are you in the prison of power? That's right. Are you in the prison of greed? Are you in the prison of... Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. That's... Fear. Fear. Worry. Fear. Well, they say fear is from the devil. You know, it's... it's, yeah. it's uh, Perfect love casts out fear. Fear. That's right. And, and um, it, it tells us all the time, in, like, 365 times in the Bible, be not afraid. Uh -huh. Be not afraid. One, That's one, right. one time for every day not to be afraid. Uh -huh. But we are, we are afraid. You know, what are we afraid of? Uh -huh. Are you afraid of losing something? Are you afraid of losing your possessions? Are you afraid of losing your husband? Are you afraid of losing this and that? Which puts us back into a prison of that's our right. own, a prison that we create. Yes, that's true. And one of the things that we do that I don't think people realize is if we talk about someone. Sometimes we're in the prison of just gossiping. Oh, gossip is the worst. That's the worst. Yes. Why don't you, let, let's talk about I, that. Because... Well, I think gossip actually does more harm in this world, probably. How many wars have even been created by gossip? How many divorces? How many abortions? How many people were put in, in jails because of what other people said? I have an example of that that's very dramatic, mm -hmm. that a man came into prison years ago, and he was um, uh, very dis he was crying. He said, I killed my wife. And we went together into the chapel. I said, let's go and pray. And we went into the chapel, and he said that he was living in Los Angeles, and his wife, they were very young. His wife was 22. He was about 28. And he said they had two little girls, and they separated. And he went to Mexico City, and they had a short separation of about six months. And when he came back, her best friend went to him and said, while you were gone, she had a lover. And he was so jealous and so enraged, he hit her very hard. And he called her names, and he said, I'm sending you back to your pueblo in Mexico, and they're going to know what kind of a blank, blank woman you are. Mm -hmm. And you'll never see your children again, because I'm... Uh, in, in the process of immigration to the United States, I'm already reg uh, a registered alien or whatever. I forget how they call it in English. But, uh, but you're not going to be able to cross the border again. And you're going to go back there. And all the way down to Tijuana, he spoke terribly to her, and he hit her too. Mm -hmm. He said, when we arrived at the airport, I threw her clothes in a, in a suitcase. We arrived at the airport. I went to the back of the car to get her suitcase out, and under the seat there was a gun, my gun, and she picked it up and put it to her head and pulled the trigger. No. And she's dead. And he said, but I did kill her, didn't I, Mother? I said, yes, you did. But you had an accomplice. You had an accomplice that thinks she's free, that good friend that went to tell you something. Mm -hmm. They went to tell you something that separated a family forever. Put one young girl into a grave. Put another man to have spent years in prison. To put four grandparents with their hearts broken and two children left orphans. Because she, well, I only oh, yeah. told the truth. Yeah. The truth that damages, I really think it's worse than a lie. Mm -hmm. 